Section 2.2 .2 is about inter-switch connectivity. The first topic is trunk ports. A trunk port on a switch is configured to carry traffic for multiple VLANs, enabling communication between different VLANs across multiple switches. Trunk ports use VLAN tagging to identify which VLAN each frame belongs to. The IEEE 802.1Q inserts a 4-byte tag in the Ethernet frame to identify the VLAN as it crosses the trunk. This allows switches to forward traffic to the correct VLAN on other switches. For example, imagine two switches, each with devices on different VLANs. For example, VLAN 10 for accounting and VLAN 20 for sales. To allow communication between the accounting devices on both switches, you would configure a trunk port on each switch and connect them. The trunk ports would carry VLAN for both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, allowing the accounting devices to communicate with each other even though they are on different physical switches. Let's now talk about Dynamic Trunking Protocol. Dynamic Trunking Protocol, or DTP, is a Cisco proprietary protocol used to negotiate trunking between switch ports. It automatically determines if a link should be an access port or a trunk port and which trunking protocol to use. DTP is enabled by default on Cisco switches, and interfaces will be in either Dynamic Auto or Dynamic Desirable mode. There are four main DTP modes, Dynamic Auto, Dynamic Desirable, Trunk, and Access, each with its own behavior in trunk negotiation. In Dynamic Auto, the interface passively waits for a negotiation message from the other side to become a trunk. If the other side is set to trunk or dynamic desirable, the interface will become a trunk. When the interface is configured as dynamic auto mode, the interface passively listens for DTP messages from the other side of the switch's interface. If a dynamic auto interface receives a DTP message from the other side of the switch's interface, a trunk link is formed and the interface starts tagging frames. No trunk link is formed if no message is arrived from the other side of the switch's interface or the trunking capabilities of two switches are different. For example, if both switches interface are configured with dynamic auto mode, they will never generate DTP messages and the link will be an access link. In dynamic desirable, the interface actively initiates trunk negotiation with the other side. The interface which is configured as dynamic desirable mode will generate DTP messages on the interface and actively try to convert the other side of the switch's interface to form a trunk. A trunk link will be formed if the other side of the switch's interface is configured with dynamic desirable, dynamic auto, or trunk mode. Here are examples when trunk link will form. Case 1 is when both sides are dynamic desirable. Case 2 is when one side is dynamic desirable and the other side is dynamic auto. And case 3 is when one side is trunk and the other side is dynamic desirable. Trunk mode is when the interface is forced into trunking mode regardless of the configuration on the other side. It will still send DTP messages to negotiate the trunking protocol. And in access mode, the interface is forced into access mode, and it will not participate in trunk negotiation. It will also stop sending and processing DTP frames. As a summary, you can check below the function of the different DTP modes. Next is configuring trunk ports. First is entering the interface configuration mode. Then, use this command to force the port to trunk mode. It is optional but best practice to label the interface. And here are commands to verify the trunking ports. 
The show interface's trunk command displays all trunk ports on the switch and their trunking details. Here's what to look for. The mode should be on or desirable if trunk is negotiated. Encapsulation is usually 802.1Q. For native VLAN, check that it matches on both sides. Make sure needed VLANs are included in allowed VLANs. And the show interface interface ID switch port displays detailed interface switch port status, including administrative and operational modes. Here's what to look for. Administrative mode is what the port is configured for. Operational mode is what it is currently doing. Native VLAN must match on both sides. And the show VLAN brief command shows all VLANs configured on a switch and which ports are in each VLAN. Here's what to look for. Verify that VLANs exist and are active and confirm ports are in correct VLAN. The next topic is 802.1Q trunk encapsulation. 802.1Q or .1Q is the open standard VLAN tagging protocol that lets multiple VLANs travel over the same physical link between switches and is used to manage VLAN information on Ethernet. All modern Cisco routers and switches use 802.1Q as the default trunking protocol to encapsulate and de-encapsulate VLAN information on Ethernet frames. 802.1 trunking protocol modifies the original Ethernet frame. It inserts a 4-byte field called a tag field into the header of the original Ethernet frame. The last 12 bits are used for the VLAN identifier. Here's an example. On the sending device, it enters a tag into the frame's header. On the receiving device, it uses the VLAN ID stored in the tag to identify the VLAN the frame belongs to. Then, it removes the tag from frames before forwarding them from the VLAN ports they belong. In the interface config mode, this command explicitly sets .1Q. Some newer Catalyst iOS versions do .1Q only and hide this command. And the last topic in this section is native VLAN. Native VLAN is the specific VLAN that handles untagged traffic on a trunk link between switches using 802.1 encapsulation. Native VLAN was created for backward compatibility with the old device that doesn't endorse VLANs. Here are some key points to remember. Every trunk port must have a native VLAN. By default, VLAN 1 is the native VLAN on Cisco switches. If a switch receives untagged Ethernet frames on a trunk port, it assumes that frame belongs to the native VLAN. Why is native VLAN important? It allows backward compatibility with older devices that do not tag VLANs. They provide a default VLAN for traffic that isn't tagged with a specific VLAN ID, ensuring it still gets routed correctly across the trunk link. This is how native VLAN works. The native VLAN must be configured consistently on both ends of a trunk link. Here's an example of configuring native VLANs. For example, you need to configure GIG01 as a trunk port with native VLAN 999. First is create VLAN 999 so it exists on a switch and give it a name. Then, set 802.1Q encapsulation, and this may be optional on some platforms. And then, set VLAN 999 as the untagged or native VLAN. And last is to activate the trunk mode on the port. Here are some commands to verify the native VLAN. The show interfaces trunk command 
displays the native VLAN on the trunk port. And here are some exam tips. Always match the native VLAN on both sides of a trunk to avoid mismatches. Native VLAN is untagged. Every other VLAN is tagged on the trunk. You can change the native VLAN from VLAN 1 to something else. As the security best practice. And know the difference between access port VLANs and native VLANs. Access ports assign host to VLANs, but native VLANs applies only on trunk ports. A port that carries traffic for multiple VLANs between switches using VLAN tagging. Command that sets a port to trunk mode. Adds VLAN tags to Ethernet frames on trunk links to identify the VLAN. The default native VLAN on Cisco switches. Command to verify trunk configuration.